Hi, my name is Brian from Ridgeback Productions, and I help beginning voiceover talents grow their business and generate some income, preferably and hopefully lots and lots of income. And I do that with gig reviews and consultations and coaching and helping you out with your audio production. And in this video, we're going to be diving into a little bit of audio production with my favorite DAW, DAW. It's a digital audio workstation. It's what we use for our editing and recording. And we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into Adobe Audition with uh, noise reduction and normalization. So we'll, I'll be telling you what that is, how it works, how it helps you out, and all the good stuff with that. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, so Adobe Audition is awesome. It's a super powerful tool. It is definitely a step up from the free options out there. And I highly recommend you uh, get interested in it and go for it. It is just optimized for dialogue, which is what we do with voiceover in our business. So noise reduction is basically it's taking uh, the audio file and taking out a specific frequency that you don't necessarily need. And I'm gonna show you how that works. So when we record, and I've already recorded, and I'll show you what this space is. When we record, there's a certain level of room tone and perhaps uh, computer fans and stuff like that that go on in the background. And what you do is you, when you record, you're gonna record about five to 10 seconds of just silence. Just record it, hold your breath, whatever you wanna do. You're going to record that, and then you use that sample of the room tone or room noise, and you tell Adobe Audition, take this sound, this noise frequency, and take it out of my whole recording. So that's how it works. Let's go into Adobe Audition right now. All right, so here we are in Adobe Audition, and you can see this beautiful audio file. This section right here... This section right here is my room to tone. If I uh, zoom in on that and increase, like right now it looks like it's flat, like I have no sound in my, in my studio. But if you zoom in, you can see that I have little peaks of negative 58. I had a couple little pops around negative 63. For the most part, it sounds pretty good. I mean, my studio is pretty dialed in, so... Um, I'm not too concerned with my room tone, but that's what that is. So the way that it works is you record it in the beginning and the end, wherever you want to put it. I tend to put it at the end. So you put it at the end and you're going to highlight that entire section and you're going to go into effects, uh, noise reduction, and you need to capture the noise print. So what that means is you want to take that section and you're telling Adobe Audition, take this, capture it, hold on to it because we're going to use it. So you capture it and it tells you the current audio selection will be captured and loaded as your noise print. Perfect. You can even say, don't show this alert again. It doesn't matter. Click OK. It's ready to go. Now that Audition knows this is my noise print, this is what we're working with, you go back up to effects back to noise reduction. This time you're not going to capture the noise print. You're actually going to do noise reduction. It's a process. And the short key for this is control shift P, but I wanted to show you where it was in the file menu. So we click that. Now we got a little box right here that pops up. This box right here is going to show us our noise print, which is already created. Here's the beauty of it. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to touch anything. Leave it as is. Whatever it created, you're good to go. So go ahead and click the apply. And you're good. So remember when we zoomed in before? Let's zoom in again and see what it looks like. Oh, it's reduced it. Now, it didn't get rid of it, and that's okay. You don't want to get rid of it because what Audition is doing is it's taking that room tone and it's reducing the frequency, and that's what you want. You don't want to get rid of it because what if some of that is in your natural speech and you don't want to affect your speech? You don't want to alter that in any way. You just want to reduce that sound. It's a good level. It's just, it's clean. It's 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 pretty safe. It's a good way to start. Okay, so there you go. 
I also want to point out that my recording level, and I'll go ahead and play this for you. I want you to pay attention to these audio waves across right here. I can even zoom in and show you. I'm recording around negative 12 to negative 9. I don't ever like to bounce above negative 9. I can also draw your attention down to the meter right here. You're going to see that my, uh, my signal is in between negative 12 and negative 9. I'm going to live around this area. When I record, when you record, this is what you're looking for, negative 12 to negative 9. So we'll go ahead and play that. Pay attention to the metering down here, and you can also see it go across, and you'll see it's the same. This is a uh, quick recording just to show you that the levels are within range of negative 12 to negative 9, which is the ideal recording input level. Make sure. Okay, so did you see that? Did you just notice that it's, it's, it's around there? That's where I want you to record at. Now you think, okay, Brian, that's really low. And it technically it is low. And by low, it's not very loud. But that's okay because as you build, as you build your process of learning how to do audio production, you want your input to be low. You want it to be clean. And it gives you options to make it better because you have what they call headroom. This section in between the very top where it peaks or uh, where it would clip, sorry, the very top where it would clip in the peaks of your waves, that's called headroom. You want lots of headroom for um, whatever effects that you're gonna later apply, whether it's EQing, compression, whatever like that. And for this, we're gonna normalize. So here's what we did. We recorded, we like it, we went through, we edited out any of the errors, everything's good to go. We're, we already did our noise reduction, and now we're going to do normalization. All right, so for normalization, you don't even have to highlight the whole thing. You could just click and just make sure nothing is selected. Go up to Effects. Then we're going to go down to Amplitude and Compression, which is right there. Down to normalize, which is a process. Okay, so we click normalize. And all this, if it seems extraneous, like you're like, wow, there's a lot of steps. There are shortcuts, and I'll teach you the shortcuts as we go along. Okay, so for normalize, click normalize. And now it's just going to give you this window. For this window, it's basically saying you want to normalize to, you can normalize to a percentage, or you can normalize to a dB. I want you to select this option right here, dB. It will remember, next time you open this up, it will remember that you like dB. Okay, for dB, you're going to click the box right there, and I want you to type in negative 3. I know it's odd. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but the decimal value of audio is based in decimals, or it's in negative numbers. So... The very, very quiet is, you know, whatever, negative 100. The louder it gets, the actual higher the number gets, but it's the lower the negative number. If you remember your fifth grade math, the lower the negative number, the, the more it is. So negative three. All right. So uh, negative three is what we're going to normalize to. We're going to click apply. And what this did was it took the audio wave and it took the highest peak, which is this guy right here, to negative three. Okay, I'll show you that again. Okay, this was our recording. It's going to take the entire recording and it's going to increase the amplitude of the audio wave to what you determine you want it to be. So for this, and I'm teaching you, I want you to go to negative three when you normalize. Effect. Amplitude compression, normalize, and then remember I said it's going to remember. It does. It remembers after you've done it once. Audition remembers, oh, you like this. So dB negative 3. If you don't remember how to do that, you click dB if it's not already. Click the, the value box, subtract 3, negative 3, and click apply. It's going to increase our audio wave uniformly across the entire wave, and it's going to take the highest peak, which happens to be this peak right here, and it's going to push everything up until that highest peak is at negative 3.
Okay. There's our negative. There's our highest peak, negative three. That is a really good starting point. As you're beginning in voiceover, if you do uh, noise reduction and normalization, you're you're off to a great start. And as you progress and you learn the fundamentals of good um, mic technique and <clears throat> all the prerequisites for getting clean audio, you want clean audio in so you can get the clean audio out. You could only fix so much with your DAW. So you get clean audio in, we're going to work on that. And then uh, noise reduction, normalize to negative three, and then you can save it. Okay, so then we'd go up to file, save as, save as a wave, save it wherever you want, and we could call it YouTube demo, whatever you want to call it, okay? So there you go. That's Adobe Audition for noise reduction and normalization. Excellent. So we went through it. Um, it's, it's actually not that hard. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me. The link is in the description below or drop a comment. And, uh, if you have any questions, is there anything you want to see on Adobe audition? Maybe you want to see, are, are you ready? Do you feel like you're ready to step into maybe some of the, the EQing or compression limiting? There's, there's a lot you can do to your audio, but the truth is if you can work on clean audio in the clean audio out comes out with very minimal, minimal effort. So there you go. Adobe Audition. I hope what you got, blah, blah, blah. I hope you guys got what you came for. Um, I love teaching this. If Again, if you have any questions, please don't forget. Uh, you can always put them in the comments below. If you like the video, hit that like button and subscribe some, for some, uh, come on, I am struggling to talk today. It's been a bit of a day. Hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.